visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is obtained through active learning. Welcome to the care and use lesson for the Focus 2 mid-size walk-behind auto scrubber. As you can guess from this title, we'll be covering how to use and care for the machine. This course is not intended to replace the operator's manual that ships with the machine. Please read, understand, and follow all the safety, maintenance, and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from the machine. After completing this course, the learner shall be able to describe the three items that should be inspected before operating the machine, describe how to fill the machine with water and detergent, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, identify each item on the control panel and describe what each one does, describe the procedures to strip a floor without the use of chemicals, list two or more items to be inspected and cleaned before storing the machine, and list three maintenance items to be checked weekly. Before one can begin using the machine, it has to be prepared for use. Let's start from the very beginning by turning on the light in the room in which the machine was stored. The first thing you should see is the machine parked with the recovery tank open, the battery charger plugged into the machine, and the pad drivers or brushes laying nearby. This is how the machine should have been left after it was used last. The first step is to unplug the battery charger. If the machine is equipped with an onboard charger, the charger cord should be stored using the convenient cord wrap on the back of the machine. During charging, the recovery tank should be left open for air circulation. Now the recovery tank can be lowered to its normal operating position. The next step is to inspect the pads or brushes. These should have been rinsed the last time the machine was used, so they should be relatively clean and free from any large debris. Inspect the pads or brushes for wear and determine if there is enough brush or pad life for the scrubbing you are about to complete. And if not, replace the pads or brushes as needed. Also make sure you have the correct pad or brush type for the scrubbing that needs to be performed. Now install the pad or brushes on the machine. For disc machines, remove the skirt assembly by unlatching the front latch and slide each skirt assembly to the side. The machine features a fully flexible gimbal brush drive system. Lift the pad driver up until it contacts the gimbal and then rotate the brush until you feel the, feel the female portion of the brush engage with the male portion of the gimbal. Now press the brush upward to snap it into place. It can help to place your thumbs on the top of the deck plate and squeeze the brush on while wiggling it back and forth. Slide each side skirt assembly towards the center of the machine and lock the front latch. For boost decks, simply slide the pad under the machine, line up the pad with the fixed pad driver, and attach the pad by pressing it on. On cylindrical machines, remove the end plate assembly using the tool-free black knob and install the brushes, and then reattach each end plate. Inspect the debris hopper and empty it if it has any debris in it. Next, make sure the recovery tank is empty. Inspect the debris cage and make certain that it is empty as well. If it does have debris in it, empty it now. Then inspect the rear squeegee blade to make sure that they are ready for use and aren't torn or nicked. The machine features a four-sided squeegee blade that has four working edges so the blade can be flipped end for end and flipped top to bottom to expose a fresh working edge all without tools. If all four edges are damaged, a new squeegee blade is needed. Attach the squeegee to the machine with the two thumb nuts and attach the squeegee hose. Do not over tighten the squeegee as it is designed to break away if it hits an object within your building. Now we are ready to fill the machine with water. Open the solution fill port and fill the machine with clean pure water. Hot or warm water cleans better, but the water temperature should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit. If the machine is equipped with an onboard detergent or chemical mixing system, fill the machine with pure water only. If an outboard detergent dilution system is used, like a wall mount station, fill the machine from this device. If bulk detergent is to be mixed in the tank, fill the machine one-third the way up with water, then add detergent, and fill the machine full. In all cases, the machine should be filled so the solution level is 2-3 to three inches below the fill port. The machine has a 23 gallon capacity. On machines equipped with the Clark Chemical Mixing System, fill the machine with clear water and then inspect the detergent cartridge and verify the correct detergent is in the cartridge and there is enough detergent in the tank to complete the scrubbing task at hand. We are now ready to transport the machine to the area to be cleaned. Turn on the machine using the key and verify that the machine has enough battery power to complete the scrubbing task by using the control panel battery gauge. 
The machine is controlled using the safety palm switches and a maximum sp speed control potentiometer. The potentiometer sets the maximum speed for both forward and reverse. Set the potentiometer about halfway between the slowest and fastest speed. The palm switches control the drive motor to the machine. Depressing either one or both of the palm switches will propel the machine forward. To go in reverse, the small white reverse switch located on the handlebars must be pressed while one of the palm switches is also pressed. Now let's take a look at the control board and see how to run the machine. We'll start with an overview and then describe each function in detail. The Clark Focus 2 scrubber is super simple to operate with easy to use buttons and icons that show each function. This makes training fast and simple. In the upper left hand corner is the one touch scrub button. Next to it is the extra pressure switch. Then we have the vacuum on off button. The last item on the top row is the dealer installed optional hour meter. Starting on the bottom row we have the solution increase and decrease buttons. Next to it is the battery gauge and finally the key switch. If the optional chemical mixing system is installed, the dilution control knob is mounted here. Now let's look at how to use the machine for basic everyday scrubbing tasks. First set the maximum speed control potentiometer to the desired speed position. Next lower the rear squeegee to the floor. The best practice to start scrubbing is to have the machine in motion slightly then press the one touch scrub button. This will help prevent any damage to the floor and help prevent donuts. Pressing the one touch scrub button will turn the vacuum motor on automatically. To begin scrubbing with the machine, while in motion press the one touch scrub switch. The deck will automatically lower to the floor, the brushes will begin to spin, and the solution will begin to flow. Adjust the solution flow rate to low, medium, or high by using the solution increase and decrease buttons. Pressing the solution decrease button a number of times will eventually turn the solution flow off, which is indicated when all LEDs are extinguished. To pause scrubbing, simply release the safety yellow palm switches. The machine will stop moving, the brushes will stop, and the solution will stop flowing. To scrub in reverse, lift the squeegee and depress the yellow reverse button while depressing either of the safety yellow palm switches. To stop scrubbing, simply press the one touch scrub button again. Again, the best practice to stop scrubbing is to do so while the machine is in slight motion. When the one touch scrub button is pressed, the brushes will stop spinning, the deck will raise from the floor, and the solution will stop flowing. The vacuum motor will remain on for about 10 seconds allowing you to pick up any water left under the machine and water on the floor. Now let's look at the two buttons that are used less frequently. The first is the extra pressure button next to the one touch scrub button. This button is used to apply maximum pressure on the scrub deck for removing heavy soils or when using the machine to strip floors with pure water. Note that this button is only active on disc and boost machines. Cylindrical machines have a single brush pressure setting. Extra pressure should only be applied when it's needed. This scrub mode uses extra energy, reducing the runtime of the machine and wears out the pads or brushes faster. The other seldom used button is the vacuum on off button. This allows you to turn on just the vacuum. This can be handy if a pipe breaks or there's a spill in the facility for example and you just want to use the machine to pick up the water or the spill. The vacuum can also be shut off if you choose while double scrubbing. Double scrubbing is used when you need extreme cleaning of a small area. Here you can lift the squeegee and go back and forth over the area to thoroughly agitate it and let the brushes and chemical do their work. While double scrubbing, you can turn off the vac motor if you so choose. Now that we have learned how to use the machine for daily cleaning, let's take a look how to use the Focus 2 Boost Machine to strip floor finish without the use of any chemicals. To do this, you'll need both a standard red pad and a chemical free stripping pad. Drain the solution tank if chemicals have been mixed in the clean water tank. If the machine is equipped with the optional chemical mixing system, turn the chemical off by rotating the chemical dilution control knob all the way counterclockwise. You'll also need a new red scrubbing pad. The reason for this pad is it allows the stripping pad to follow the contours and imperfections of the floor and protect the pad driver from damage. While it's not required, it's a good idea to use the optional double-sided Velcro sheet. This gets sandwiched between the red pad on the machine and the stripping pad. The only reason for this pad is to hold the stripping pad to the red pad. If it's not used, the stripping pad will stay on the floor every time the deck is raised and there's a good chance it will be run over by the machine. To begin stripping the floor, it's a good idea to pre-wet the pad by using the solution tank drain hose and then attach the pad to the machine. Reduce the speed of the machine to a slow speed. Typically you want to aim for 60 to 100 feet per minute, depending on the desired results, the finish that's on the floor, and how worn out the stripping pad is. 
At some point, the stripping pad will lose its abrasiveness and be less effective at cutting through the finish. Now lower the squeegee and press the one-touch scrub button and engage extra pressure. Lastly, to press the safety yellow palm switches to begin stripping, and that's all there is to it. At some point, the pad will begin to lose its cutting power and become worn. The square footage of coverage of the pad is highly dependent on the travel speed, the desired results, and the floor finish that's on the floor. When the pad, when the pad becomes too worn out on one side, flip it over and begin using the other side. After the area has been stripped, make a single scrubbing pass over the floor using a standard red pad and a neutral cleaner to remove any residual floor finish. Eventually the solution tank will run dry and the recovery tank will become full. The Clark Focus 2 midsize has a recovery tank shutoff switch that shuts off the vacuum motor when the recovery tank is full. This helps prevent the vacuum motor from ingesting water. When the recovery tank is full, transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it and refill the machine if required. After using the machine for a while, one of two things is going to happen. The battery may become depleted and the machine must be recharged. When this happens, the battery gauge will indicate the batteries need to be recharged and all scrubbing functions will cease. The machine stops scrubbing when the battery pack is depleted, but the transport function does not. This means you will always have plenty of battery power to transport the machine to the area to empty the tank and back to the charging area. The other thing that may occur is that all the areas that needed to be scrubbed are now scrubbed and clean and the machine is ready to be put away until it's needed again. Just as we learned earlier about preparing the machine for use, we're going to do the opposite procedure to prepare the machine for storage. The first thing to do is to empty the recovery tank and rinse it out thoroughly to remove any and all debris from the tank. Next, remove the debris catch cage, empty it, and rinse it out. Now you can rinse off the squeegee and inspect it to make sure the blades are not ripped or torn. If they need to be changed or replaced, do that now. Remove the brush deck skirts on disc machines and take off the brushes or pad drivers and rinse them off and remove any large debris that may be present. Inspect the pads or brushes and see if the pads need to be changed or flipped over and check to see if the brushes need to be replaced. If they do, do that now and then set them aside to dry. On boost machines, simply remove the pad, inspect it, and clean it as necessary. If you have a cylindrical machine, remove the brushes and inspect them for any large debris and rinse them off and set them aside to dry. Remove the hopper from behind the scrub deck, empty it, and rinse that too. Lift up the recovery tank into its storage position. Now you can plug the battery pack into the charger and charge the batteries for the next person who needs to use the machine. It's also a good idea to take a wet rag and clean off the exterior of the machine. And remember, turn off the light when you leave the room. Besides the maintenance that's done on the machine on a daily basis, there's also maintenance required periodically. Weekly one should. Check the water level of each battery cell and add distilled water as needed. The machine should not be charged if the plates are not under the water. Before charging, inspect the cells and make sure that none of the plates are exposed. If they are, then add just enough water to cover the plates, but do not fill the cell all the way up until the machine is fully charged. If the machine is fully charged, then add water to it so it touches the bottom of the fill tube in each cell. Do not fill the cell to the very top of the battery. Clean the solution filter. Clean the solution trough on cylindrical machines. And clean out the chemical mixing system by running warm water through the system. Monthly, the machine should be lubricated. And monthly, equalize the battery pack. Equalizing the battery pack ensures that each cell is at its maximum charge potential for maximum runtime. This is done by fully charging the machine and then unplugging it. After a minute or two, plug the machine back in to charge it again, and repeat this one more time. After a year or about 300 hours, the carbon brushes on the vacuum motor should be inspected for wear. After one year or 500 hours, the carbon brush brushes in the scrub motor should be inspected for wear. Refer to the operator's manual or an authorized service center on lubrication and carbon brush inspection and replacement. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.